he did end up uh, having an accident in traffic because of this. Good morning, YouTube. This is Cruise Man out again on the 2018 Honda Goldwing. Welcome back to Cruise Man's Garage YouTube channel, the channel for everything Honda Goldwing. If you're passionate about motorcycling, or more specifically, the Goldwing, then you're in the right place. Please take a second, click that little subscribe button down below, and if you click on the little bell icon, YouTube will notify you when I come out with some new videos. Leaving my morning coffee once again. You notice it's a little darker out now than it has been in the past. That's because the, you know, the days are getting a little shorter. And uh, I am pleased to announce, I'm looking down at my temperature gauge right now, and it says 64 degrees, but I think it's actually a little cooler than that. I think once I ride for a few seconds, it'll go down to probably about 60. And when I got up this morning, it was actually about 57 degrees. And I mean, that is perfect riding weather. Well, this morning I had somebody send me an email and I thought it was worth talking about, and that's uh, something you have to be cautioned about with the 2018 Plus Goldwing. And uh, this person, I don't recall the name right now, I'm sorry, I'll put it in the video if I can get home and look it up. But what he was doing was splitting traffic you know lane splitting with his 2018 Goldwing and to create a little more space or make his bike a little narrower as he was lane splitting he decided to fold his rear view mirrors in and uh, for those of you that have heard me talk about this subject before you know that's a pretty dangerous thing and he did end up I think he did end up uh, uh, having an accident in traffic because of this so let me issue this warning once again I did this a few months ago but it probably bears repeating and honestly I am surprised that Honda has not put a warning on these rearview mirrors but on the 2018 model, if you fold the rear view mirrors in and then ride the motorcycle, you run the risk of having your front brake engaged inadvertently because when you turn the handlebars, the right rear view mirror will hit your brake lever and engage your front brake. If you have a six-speed manual transmission and you turn the handlebar to the right, it could engage your clutch lever. Neither one is good. I know of the first time I heard of this, somebody was pulling into their garage and I think they were trying to make the bike a little narrower so they could get past their car in the driveway or something and he ended up dropping the bike in his driveway because of this of course that's probably not as bad as doing it in traffic but you need to um, I just closed my face shield so the sound may change a little bit here may have a little echo It's very important that you never ride the 2018 Plus Goldwing with those mirrors folded in. And again, I am really surprised that Honda did not put a warning on this. 
because uh, it is extremely dangerous and uh, not something that you would really know about unless you just did it. Now, I've never ridden the motorcycle uh, with the mirrors folded in on any year model, so it never, never occurred to me that anybody would do that. And I'm not sure it really makes the motorcycle that much more narrow uh, when riding through like splitting lanes because the mirrors don't really stick out any farther than the handlebars. Now I guess you could turn the handlebars to get through a really tight space, but if you're going through that tight of space, I don't know, you probably in a bind anyway. I'm not really sure the Goldwing is the perfect bike for lane splitting, but I guess people do do it. So anyway, you've been warned again about the rear view mirror danger on the 2018 plus Honda Goldwing. Now since it is, uh, now I see my uh, temperature gauge is down to 60 degrees and I'll bet it hits 59 before we get home. So now that it's a little cooler this morning, I get a chance to try out my heated grips. I don't really use the heated seat that much. I uh, don't ride, usually I don't ride if it's under 40 degrees. Occasionally I'll ride in the high 30s, uh, but usually 40 degrees is about my limit. If I'm out of town on a trip, and it dips down into the 30s and I have to ride, I will. I do not have heated gear. I mean, this is Texas, so it's not like we get enough cold weather to really warrant heated gear for me. Now, I know there's people in Texas that have heated gear because it does get cold. I just don't choose to ride when it's that cold. But I have used the heated seat on this 2018 Plus a couple of times. Uh, Ricky actually used it on the trip to Wingding once or twice. And she said uh, she didn't feel like it really did that much good for her. Um, I've used mine a couple of times. I felt like it warmed up pretty nice. I think the heated hand grips are wonderful. I've got mine set on the second level right now. And I can feel them, they're warm. You know, they're just warm enough for 60 degree riding. Uh, I have tried them all the way on level five and I can barely hold on to them, they're so hot. So it would have to be really super cold or I'd have to have on really, really thick gloves to be able to feel it. Uh, so I've never used level five. I have used level four a couple of times when it was in the 40s. And uh, I think the uh, heated grips do a really good job. I'd be curious to know, for those of you that have a uh, 2018 plus Goldwing, or even the earlier model Goldwing, what is your opinion of your heated seat and heated grips? Do you feel like they do an adequate job? And also, if you have heated gear, heated riding gear, like a vest or jacket, I'd like to hear about that. You know, I tried a Gerbings jacket one time, and I had it on my 2012 Goldwing and I tried it one time and it worked great. It really does keep you warm. But, you know, I guess I'm just too careless. I get off the motorcycle and I forget to unplug it and, you know, I walk a couple of feet and it jerks me back to the bike, you know, <laughs> or it unplugs and snaps back and I just, I thought, you know, I'm never going to be able to keep up with this and remember to unplug this thing. And I don't ride in cold weather that much anyway. I think I wore the jacket one time and ended up selling it on eBay. But I know for those of you who are hardcore cold weather riders, you love your heated gear. And, uh, you know, I might try it again someday if I could find one that's battery operated. I think a battery operated solution might be better for me because I wouldn't have to deal with keeping it plugged in or hooked up to the bike at all for that matter. So if you have heated gear, I'd like to hear about it in the comments down below. You guys have been really good about putting in some 
excellent comments on these videos. I really appreciate it. And I'll give you a real quick update on the new videos that are coming. I'm in the editing process on the last two videos. I only have two videos left to edit. And then I will be uh, updating the 2018 Plus Goldwing Maintenance Video Series with these new videos. And I'll just remind you once again that uh, if you already have the videos, before those videos are uploaded, if you already own the videos, you will get those at no extra charge. So all of the current subscribers and current owners will get those new videos. Gratis. But if you wait until after the new videos go up, the price is going to increase. But I'll be talking more about that next week. There's no rush. They probably won't be they probably won't be going up for another week or 10 days or so. I'm redoing the video for my uh, used Goldwing buying tips video, which the one I have out now I put out in 2012, and uh, close to half a million people have watched that video. It's one of my, in fact, I think it is my most popular video. But you know, a lot's changed since 2012, so I'm updating the video to include some new information. For the last two days, I've been shooting video out in my driveway, and then I get all the video, you know, and it takes 20, 30, 40 minutes to shoot the video. Then I go in and put it on the computer, and I see everything's out of focus. It's hard to tell when you're shooting the video if you're out of focus, because all you've got is this little bitty screen to look at, and it's four or five feet away, so I can't really tell if it's in focus or not. You don't know until you're done and you go in, you put it on the computer and you see, oh my God, it's all out of focus. I have to throw all that work away and start over. So today, I think I have a solution, a new technique for doing the autofocus that might be working correctly. I went out last night for the third shoot, started working on the uh, video and it, everything was in focus, but all the noise in the neighborhood and the sun was going down and then the sun started getting in my eyes <laughs> and so i had to throw all that footage away so today i'm going to do the fourth take of my new used goldwing buying tips video so maybe i'll get it done today this is the stuff you go through. Those of you guys out there that are motor vloggers and you do YouTube channels, you know exactly what I'm talking about. How much video have you shot that you ended up having to throw away because the audio didn't come out or the something was screwed up on the camera You just or the battery died and you didn't know it till you got home? I mean, those of you that are motor vloggers, you know what I'm talking about. That's just part of the process. So I thank you for joining me today. Remember, don't fold in those mirrors and ride the bike. Could really get you hurt. And I will see you next time on Cruise Man's Motor Vlogs.